Hello, and welcome to Follow the Woo podcast, where each week I, Fenelong Kush, will guide you on a journey into the land of the woo. We're going to investigate witchcraft, meditations, the paranormal and supernatural, alien and fey encounters, gurus, shamanism, and, and, and all the woo. So hold on to your butt. This just might be the weirdest part of your day. Hello, listeners. Whoa. Do I have a rabbit hole for you in this episode? I'm going to be chatting with Wajid Hassan, a man who has lived a fascinating life. We're going to focus primarily on his elusive teacher, a spiritual master and man named Dr. George King. Dr. George King lived from 1919 to 1997. He was a master of yoga, a trance medium, and the author of many books on spirituality. He allegedly received hundreds, maybe thousands of transmissions from extraterrestrials, that's right, aliens, and founded the Aetherius Society in 1955. Wajid has been a part of this society for decades and gives a wonderful intro to the late Dr. George King. He also shares his own personal UFO encounter story and discusses his new book called The Struggle for World Sanity, which relays a number of unique spiritual messages for humanity. I think this is an important time for me to state a disclaimer for this episode and actually all episodes to come. There are a lot of destructive and divisive conspiracy theories floating around in the world today. And because of technology, humans have the ability to author, absorb, and act on these theories with great ease. In the greater spiritual community, there has been a massive shift from the fluffy love and light, which I think is problematic in itself, but we'll discuss that another time, to full QAnon conspiracy theories and other theories that actually praise and encourage extremely divisive and dangerous people and organizations in our world. So I want to make it clear here and now that Follow the Woo podcast does not support these kind of conspiracy theories in any way. The spirit of this podcast is to have an open mind about unusual cultural beliefs, ideologies, spiritual and occult practices, and yes, alleged encounters with aliens, cryptids, fairies, spirits, demons, etc., I am in no way encouraging the listeners to embrace or follow any ideas that arise from these episodes. I chose the name Follow the Woo so that I could follow the most unusual stories from an open, curious, and respectful perspective. Myself and you, the listeners, are going on a journey together, and should we, at some point, discover that we have accidentally followed the woo right into destructive, divisive, racist, violent, misogynistic, abusive, and or any other dangerous territory, I will take immediate action to acknowledge, delete, edit, or amend content where necessary. Over the past few years, many spiritual teachers and masters that seemed trustworthy, generous, and holy have been exposed as abusive, dishonest charlatans. This is the nature of the age we live in and I'm sure many more will be exposed in the years to come. So I'm encouraging listeners to keep an open, curious mind, but always do your own research and follow your own intuition about your bodies and your mental and spiritual practices and beliefs. Now let's listen to Wajid Hassan tell all. I love your bio because it's field service engineer, a stand-up comedian, <laughs> and now you're doing what I, what I termed is spiritual healing. I'm not sure if that's the correct terminology, but tell me how you, like a little bit about your background. How did you jump from such different areas? Well, you see, I've always been into metaphysics, spiritual healing, yoga, meditation since the age of 16. But, you know, I never really looked to myself as, you know, a person that was, that would actually promote that because it was just something that was just personal to me. I promoted it through the organization that I followed. 
uh, the Ethereum Society and we used to do, like when I was in London, we would attend like the mind, body and spirit festivals at the health festivals and we would do a lot of spiritual healing then but you know in the in the west we have to still pay the bills so for me i had a technical background i i worked as a, a fuel service engineer not only in in england but when i lived in la but i kind of got burnt out you know with with the technical aspects of life and after dr king passed away i kind of went into a kind of a depression and I couldn't get out of it because I lost my master, my spiritual master, my yogi master. And my wife at the time, she said, well, you know, you told me like uh, when you were in England in high school, you went up in front of the school and you made people laugh. And, you know, so why don't you get back into doing a little comedy? So I did that, just took some classes, did open mics in, in L.A. just just for fun. And um I had a little computer repair shop in Hollywood and this lady walked in and I fixed her Apple computer and she kept looking at me and I said, well, why, why do you keep staring at me? She said, well, you have an interesting face. I'm a casting director. So she got me an agent. So I, I really kind of wasn't looking. I started booking commercials and movies and sitcoms. I got steady work as a union actor for a number of years. So it's only been recently that I decided to write the book and I decided to like promote spirituality, metaphysics, healing, primarily because I, I feel maybe it was my time now or because of what's happening in the world now. So I'm kind of, you know, putting myself out now and, and letting people know based on my 40 years plus in the background where I just kind of kept low key. And uh, now I'm out and letting people know it's a kind of labor of love, just like acting. There's no money in it. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for the to to hopefully uh, raise the vibrations of people who are listening and to give them hope. I'm really looking forward to hearing your story because I love this stuff. I'm always researching and wanting to learn about different masters, and I've never heard of this guy. You said you, since you were 16, you were into metaphysics. When did Dr. George King come into the picture? You call him your yogi master. When did he? come into your life you know what i like about you uh fan is that you did your research you know a lot of hosts they just like put you on and say tell us about yourself you know but i really like the fact that you you did your research and and you're right he was one of the most unsung yogi masters that ever walked on this earth and he was to me was one of the greatest yogi masters that ever walked unsung because most people in the West, they look to the East, they go to India, they, they search for a yogi master in the Himalayas. And here was the master greater than, I would say, one of the greatest masters who ever walked on this earth. He continued his missions, but incognito because, you know, he was misunderstood and, and, and he was from the West. I, I was raised in the north of England till the age of 10. And then my parents moved to London and I went to high school in London and and my brother at that time was, was a member of, of his organization, the Ethereum Society. Prior to that, I was raised as a Muslim, going to the mosque, doing Islamic prayers, reading the Quran. Also, being raised in England, I went to Church of England schools where I had Bible study. So to me, I loved Islam and I loved Christianity. I have nothing against those religions. I think all religions are just different aspects of going towards the same divine principle. And I read this book written by Dr. King, where he uh, served as a medium for the Master Jesus, who actually overshadowed Dr. King when he reached a certain level of consciousness. He channeled directly from the Master Jesus, and it came out as a book called the 12 blessings, which was an extension of, I think, one of the greatest political speeches that ever was told on, on the face of the earth, which was the Sermon of the Mount. And it was an extension of the Sermon of the Mount that included a cosmic concept. So at the age of 16, I read this book, never had any contact with Dr. King or his society. And two things came into my mind. First, I thought, this makes a lot of sense. And then I thought, well, the person who wrote this, either he's a genius or the biggest fraud that ever lived. <laughs> I didn't go, oh, this is the most amazing book in my life. I just went, this is like too amazing 
or it's rubbish. So I had to make my own inquiries, like you've done your re research. So I'm not here to tell your listeners to agree with what I'm saying. I, I'm telling your listeners to have an open mind and do your own research and then make your own decisions. Part of the reason that I'm doing this podcast is because I think people don't always want to admit how interested they are in the the paranormal or the supernatural or the mystical or magical. So this podcast is for sort of just giving people more access to it and giving them an opportunity to listen to all of the incredible, miraculous things that happen every day. You know, you're right. I think also, I think there's a tremendous interest now uh, because the level of consciousness in the mind belt is raising. And also, you know, in the past, people practicing witches, they were, they were misunderstood because they had the seeing eye, they had the intuition, they were psychic, they could create magical spells, and they were burned at the stake. And these were very advanced beings. And, and because people were ignorant, they didn't understand them. And, you know, you talked about things beyond the physical. I mean, at one time, you know, we had all those abilities. Our third eye was open and we had these, these things. We, we, we've actually regressed. And now, because of things that are happening around the world on astrological and philosophy from the East is now coming into the West, people in the West are now opening up to psychic phenomena, yoga, you know, natural aspects that we, we had, which, like I said, we lost and now we're beginning to understand again. So absolutely, you're right. It's very important for people to know things that have been in, in a lot of ways hidden from them. Yes. And so so things like your show will, will enlighten people on things they've never heard of before. For me, after I read that book, something clicked. It, it was the same when I read uh, around that same age, I read the autobiography of a yogi by mm. Brahmahansa Yogananda. And again, that just like, it just clicked with me. And I felt this like very home, you know, with the book. And I think your listeners probably have those experiences as well. Um I know my sister, she had a vision that she was in Machu Picchu in Peru in a pre previous life. And when she actually uh, went to visit Peru, um, she felt completely at home, like she, it was something that was very familiar to her. Do you offer any spiritual services? You, you don't identify as a spiritual healer then. You're just a, a student of this this sort of subject matter. There's a lot of healers out there. And they open themselves up and they're making money out of, or they establish themselves as a healer. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just, like I say, it's just recently that I had that inclination to write the book. And my message right now is to let people know what's happened, the true history of what's happened in our past, mm. what's actually happening right now and where it leads from now. I don't know, but I'm carrying the message of my master and, and the masters that contacted him. In regards to healing, back in 1975, Dr. King wrote this uh, um, uh, ama amazing book called You Too Can Heal that revolutionized healing in England because at that time, spiritual healers were, were thought to have gifts from God and they had the gift and only they could heal other people. So when he came out with the book, he said, no. He said, every man, woman, and child has the ability to give healing. And mm. so he wrote this book on how to give distant healing, how to give contact healing. So if any of your listeners are interested, they could, they could look up You Too Can Heal by Dr. King. That's available from Amazon. Very, very good book. Let's start with Dr. King. You have this background of being a Muslim, then you have schooling that's Christi Christian, and then now you're somewhere in the mid seventies, you're starting to read autobiography of a yogi excellent fucking book. Then you read 12 Blessings and it starts to move things around for you in a way that says, I need to look more into this guy. Was that what you felt? You're like, let's let's go the Dr. George King route. Yeah. And it caused a lot of upset at home, a lot of fights with my dad. He thought the, the, the whole thing was evil and black magic. People fear that which they can't understand. In the end, it just it just got to the point where I couldn't stand the heat at home, and uh, I left home when I was seventeen, and I moved to 
the society headquarters was in Fulham. So I moved close by there and uh, started following the master and his teachings. In his early 20s, he was a, a section leader for the, for the London Fire Brigade during the Nazi Blitz in World War II. And it really affected him when he did search and rescue operations, picking up you know, pieces of little children. It just really bothered him why all this suffering. And then after the war, he decided to go within and he got really into yoga where he, no, not, not just Hatha yoga, but he got into pranayama, mantra yoga, different aspects of Raja, Nani yoga till he got to the point where he could raise Kundalini. And he was doing that for eight to nine hours a day for 10 years. And on top of that, he actually had a, a regular job as a London cab driver. And so he said when he was doing his preparations, he would sleep maybe two to four hours a day. That's the kind of discipline that he had. It was at that time, 10 years later, that he was contacted by the higher beings who I believe man called the UFOs. Dr. King had over 600 messages, cosmic transmissions uh, from these beings who pretty much are telling mankind that, that right now either he conforms and changes and raises his vibrations because we are at a critical point in our history. And one aspect of it is the Aquarian age, like you mentioned, where astrologically we're being forced now to change and have this open experience of caring for each other, being of service, dropping our differences. And if we don't conform, then we won't be able to live on this planet. I want to go back to what you were up to and kind of follow you through this process. So your dad's like, black magic, get out. You move closer to Dr. King. Not You're not like in a barracks that's that's at the society or anything like Scientology, right? You're just, you're like in your no. own house or your own apartment. Yeah. And the thing about the, the society that I follow, like I say, I'm not here to recruit anybody. Is We're not a cult because we don't openly recruit. And I took menial jobs in London and just followed the master and his teachings while I was there. What was it like there? I mean, just explain like a, a regular day at the society where you could be in the presence of Dr. King. Well, at that time, he actually lived in L.A. He wasn't living in London. So he would visit the headquarters and he would arrange a pilgrimage to, to holy mountains. And we would go and send out power through mantra and prayers. So we used to do that. It wasn't a large building, but I used to go in and, and help with menial chores, washing up and cleaning and other maintenance stuff. And at the same time, attending the services, I guess just like any any metaphysical, spiritual organization, there were some people who were full-time there, but most of us were from the outside working and coming in. It was kind of an ashram-type environment but we'd give uh, regular spiritual healing every week. And uh, it wasn't until I got to America that I had more interactions with, with my master. When I first got to the headquarters, I was about to enter and I had this strong feeling that somebody was looking at me and I looked up and there on the third floor, of this building was Dr. King looking at me. And my intuition knew straight away I, I kind of got really shocked and I bowed my head before him and nobody had to tell me. I just knew from within myself that this indeed was a very highly advanced spiritual master. Have there been other times where you were able to be with him in a small group or, and, and if so, what was that, what was that like? He would give uh, regular sermons on Sunday and uh, different lectures. Also the book that I wrote, struggle for world sanity. I've written some quite interesting experiences that I had with the master. Um, mm. So so those experiences are, are in the book. And I think people will be very interested in reading them. In my experience, I went to India searching, just like you said earlier, you know, in the mountains of Rishikesh for a master. And when I found one, I was actually scared because of the energetic power that sort of radiated from this person. I hadn't experienced it yet. I was really, really young and resistant, I think, probably, even though I was out there searching for it. When you started 
working with him, like where you were in his space. I know you want to save the stories from your book, but did you ever have that feeling of, wow, I'm in the presence of someone r- really powerful? Uh, I think that's probably in the early days, I didn't have that much, in, in, that much interaction with him because I, I was overwhelmed of, of how powerful and in a way I was kind of intimidated Yeah. by his presence. There was also a little sense of fear, like you, because I was younger. I mean, I was only 17, 18. In some ways, I was kind of avoiding. Yeah. Uh, because I couldn't directly go up to him and talk to him. Later on, when I grew older, of course, I did. Yeah, it's funny how that happens. You know, we're so unused to that vibration that we just kind of back up a little bit. Where he doesn't look like the traditional guru or yogi that you would imagine. He was a very tall, kind of lanky, white dude. I mean, he did right. not look like no. the, the the picture you think you're supposed to have in your mind. And then to just imagine this white dude doing eight to 10 hours of yoga. Did he learn it from someone or did he go to India? No, he didn't go to India, but I think these were recollections of his past that he was a very highly advanced master before he came to earth. But just like the Lord Buddha had to go through years of meditation before he gained enlightenment, people like the Lord Buddha, Lord Krishna, Master Jesus, they were all advanced uh, masters that came into earth and who had a particular mission to do. So in order to satisfy the karmic dictates, he was born pretty much as an ordinary earth man. And he he had to go through that discipline in order to get back to where he was and to the point where eventually he gained cosmic consciousness and was able to levitate, uh, project from his body. You know, a lot of these yogi masters have a tremendous amount of power. I think because of his mission, to earth, he kind of stayed incognito. He didn't openly declare himself. And I think there was a reason for that. So he would come across as somebody you wouldn't recognize as, you know, he didn't have long hair or a beard or saffron robes. (laughs) Uh, No, and he had a wife as well, right? He had a wife in later years as well, which was a perfectly spiritual, harmonious relationship because in order to become a yogi master, The first things you have to do is control uh, the lower centers. And he had a total control over the basic centers. He was completely celibate. And uh, he had to raise Kundalini from from those lower centers up to solar plexus and and the heart center, throat center, and the center in the forehead, which is known as the Christ center. So his wife was not only his wife, she was also a longtime devotee of of Mm. him as well. I was going to say, who's uh, who's the one who dates the yogi? You know, I mean, it's got to be like a specific vibrational person. Yeah, she was first a student. And then later on in the years, they married. But again, it, more of a spiritual union than a physical union in his, in his marriage. And uh, she was an ex- extremely important soul in his life that gave him tremendous amount of support and balance that he needed for his mission. I just find it so fascinating that he's kind of, he just flew under the radar. And for me, that makes me want to believe what you're telling me even more because he wasn't out there saying, join now, you know, pay $59.99 for my whatever, you know, my book, my services, my la la la. I think it's so interesting that he just had you know, a regular white dude haircut. Regular white dude haircut. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. You know, he was, as you said, making money on the side in the beginning by driving a cab. And then he just had this unique discipline and spent that time meditating and doing yoga and mastering the poses, I'm sure. And then going into the deeper phases of meditation and yoga, which led him then to hearing a specific disembodied voice. So I think he heard a number of them, but it was in 1954, he heard a voice speak clearly to him that said, prepare yourself. You are to become the voice of interplanetary parliament. I think as far as my research goes, this is when he made contact with Aetherius. Can you explain who Aetherius is and how 
this being has made an impact on your life? Well, in regards to the master theories, just uh, basic Eastern philosophy proves that there are different realms of existence below us and above us. And Dr. King, being a yogi master, he was able to project to these different planes of existence. He said that there's four planes of existence below us called the lower astral realms or the hells, and there's six uh, levels of, of vibration above us. Reincarnation is one of the things that the cosmic masters that contacted Dr. King were really adamant about that people on this planet go back to the teachings of reincarnation. But coming back to who are these people, where do they live, these cosmic masters that contacted Dr. King are the people that man was called the flying saucers or UFOs. They're extremely advanced scientifically. But the other thing is that they're also extremely advanced millions of years spiritually. Mm. And what Dr. King was able to do, he was able to project two places like Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn and said that there's advanced civilizations that live there. Now, of course, when he said that in the 50s and the 60s, everybody laughed at him. They said yep. he's a nutcase. And of course, scientifically, I would agree that, you know, just as a physical terrestrial, I don't think you could physically live on, on these planets in the solar system. But these masters live on the higher planes uh, of vibration. I mean, quantum physics is now finally, after a little, what they say, what the yogi master says, the scientists find out, you know, centuries later, that there are parallel universes or, or different planes of, of existences. They found out through their own calculations and to their own researches. And so places like uh, Mars and Venus are, are, are inhabited uh, by these advanced cosmic masters on the higher realms, on the higher vibrations. And Dr. King was able to project it from his physical body. And he wrote another book called You Are Responsible. And in there, he highlights some of the, some of the experiences that he had visiting the moon, where he saw a space station on the moon, visiting Mars, visiting Venus. And so the master Theorius, when he contacted Dr. King, is an interplanetary master who's actually from the planet Venus. And why did these interplanetary masters contact Dr. King? That's the question. Well, if you look what was happening in the 50s and 60s, mankind, once again, there was not only the Cold War, but mankind also started exploding the atom and hydrogen bombs. And it was known at that time by the higher forces that, you know, of course, we know that our planet Earth is a beautiful living goddess, not just a piece of rock who sustained us for years. And we as ignorant mankind, we've been pilferaging and raping her body over the years without even thinking. And at that time, when they started the atomic explosions, it was known that the that Mother Earth was going to die. And so the flying saucers appeared in the skies. There was a, a, a tremendous concern within the solar system about what was happening on Earth. And that was when the cosmic masses contacted Dr. King as the, what they term as primary mental terrestrial channel and started giving their teachings. And one of the main teachings that they started talking about was for mankind to stop atomic experimentations immediately. Scientists today, and even at that time, were just baffled with all the fallout that occurred. I mean, America detonated over a thousand atomic bombs and Russia did similar. And all that fallout would have, would I think, should have killed off, not only the mother earth would have killed the whole population of this planet. And I think intervention at that time came from the higher beings and they scientifically absorbed a lot of this fallout that occurred because if they, if they hadn't intervened, uh, you and me would not be speaking today. And mm. so with your listeners, they would have to listen to these messages that were coming through. And what the cosmic masses talked about was how history previously and what's happening today and what's happening in the future. And that just boggled my mind because it, it finally made sense to me why we're here and what's going to happen in the future. Dr. King uh, wrote another book in the 60s called The Nine Freedoms, which was, again, 
an extension. Well, it, it went beyond the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. There were teachings that, that showed the exact evolutionary pattern that mankind must take in order for him to raise his vibrations and, and eventually leave this earth. You know, a yogi master can actually look at your aura and by reading your aura, he's able to actually see your past, present, and predict your future. He actually did that with me once, looked at me, and validated a past life that I that I recollected, which I wrote in my book. And a yogi master like that can also project from his body and read the aura of a planet and read the Akashic records of, of the planet which in three, four-dimensional color detail outlined the complete history of the human race. And what he wrote in the, in the Nine Freedoms was that 18 million years ago, we as a race actually lived on a planet called Maldek, which was in, between Jupiter and Mars. And Maldek is where we are, we are originally from. We're not actually earthlings were actually extraterrestrial beings that actually lived on this planet called Maldek. And Maldek was an extremely evolved, scientifically and spiritually evolved race that we were part of. He said that robots at that time took care of all the menial tasks on the planet. We had an abundance of food. We could control the weather. We had spacecraft that could do journeys within and outside the solar system. And then what happened on Maldek this, this disease struck within these scientists where they developed this uh, hydrogen bomb and in their lust for power, they exploded this bomb, which, which Dr. King said was 10,000 times more powerful than the hydrogen bomb that we have on Earth and completely exploded and destroyed the planet Maldek. And all that's left of this planet right now is the asteroid belt. And that's where we originally came 18 million years ago. And from there, the Mother Earth was approached at that time to ask if she would give refuge to these mutants from Maldek, which she did. And over thousands and millions of years, we finally evolved into another civilization called Lemuria. And we rose and Lemuria fell in another atomic war. And then from there, another civilization rose called Atlantis. And Atlantis, again, that lust for greed and power and evil came back. And at that time, there was two warring factions. One of them had a hydrogen bomb, which they called Brahma's weapon, the weapon of God. And another one had a controllable atomic ray called Indra's dart. And down went Atlantis and the earth flipped on her axis. And, you know, Atlantis fell on, under the oceans. And so this is the fourth time in our history that we've opened the Pandora's box again. And we're on the verge again of destroying this civilization. And that was one of the main reasons why the cosmic masters appeared in the skies and chose my master to come to earth to not only, not only do the transmissions, but also to do certain missions, which were very essential to actually save the planet from total destruction. Everything you said just now was fascinating, but I think it's interesting that you said not only was he chosen to receive the transmissions, but he was also chosen to go out and, and fulfill these sort of tasks to keep us from killing ourselves. And I've heard before that other entities and extraterrestrials have intervened and stopped us from killing the whole planet. The part, though, that really sticks out to me is that it wasn't like he was meant to come here and be a guru for a bunch of people to follow. And this is why we no. don't know about him. He wasn't meant to come here and have a whole following and change people's minds like uh, Pramahansa Yogananda. He was sort of under the radar the whole time. Like you said, I, he's going out and, and manipulating vibrations and things like that. I mean, that those were his missions that he was being given by Aetherius. Well, he had a number of missions that he was doing. But at the same time, let's not forget that a lot of people in the 60s and 70s were exposed to Dr. King. He was on the media. He actually appeared on the BBC. He was one of the first mediums ever to be appear on the BBC and he, he actually physically demonstrated a cosmic transmission where the master theorist came through. 
mm. uh, on the BBC, and millions and millions of people watched that. And uh, it was very interesting that when the master theorists came through, they asked the master the theorists, "Well, what's your message to worth?" And the master theorist didn't say, "Follow Dr. King." And follow the theorist society. He said, "If you're going to be a, a good Christian, be the best Christian. If you're going to be the best Hindu, be the best Hindu. If you're going to be the best Buddhist, be the best Buddhist." So the message was, you know, raise your vibrations and and follow the great teachers according to what they propounded, and and get away from the madness that's caused not only by religion, but the endless wars and. The economic strife and all the terrible things that are occurring, the, and so you talk about the, the pandemic and you talk about COVID. In the sixties, there was this virulent flu that was actually coming from the east, and the cosmic masters talked about that if that wasn't stopped, millions of people in the west would would be killed. And again, Dr. King uh, went on the media; millions of people were told. And only a few responded by sending out healing energy, and through Dr. King and his energy manipulations by the cosmic masters, this virulent flu was actually stopped in its track. And so, Dr. King did appear on media, and he talked about his missions, and millions of people were exposed. But he was so advanced in his teachings that it just bypassed them; they didn't understand what he was talking about. And mm. now, slowly, people are beginning to understand. I mean, as far as like COVID, if the media would have would have turned round and and told people send out the energy, send out the power, I think it would have arrested COVID a lot lot quicker uh, mm. than it is now. And you know, spiritual power can cure disease. That's something that you know the majority of mankind is not aware of today, and that's probably the reason I'm out there right now talking, because we've reached a point where if we don't send out the power, if we don't raise our vibrations, we are on the brink of destruction. But this time, the earth will not be destroyed, and those who, who won't be able to handle the the new age, the age of Aquarius, and the raising of the Mother Earth's vibrations will not be on this planet anymore. That's what's going to happen. So. Besides Dr. George King saying, be the best Buddhist, be the best, whatever your practice is, be the best of it. What's the central teaching as far as like your day to day? What does he want you to be doing? Meditating? What does he recommend as your own practice? And then what's the central teaching as far as the prophecy? And, and it sounds like it's sort of a rapture. Well, another thing that occurred that Dr. King was involved in again was on July the eighth, nineteen sixty-four. The Cosmic Masters came together around Mother Earth and sent tremendous spiritual energies into her, which was called the Primary Initiative of Earth. And she's been holding up her evolution for mankind, and now she's been ordered to raise her vibration to become. Uh, the true goddess that she was meant to be before she took on mankind, eighteen million years ago. We're, we're kind of like a cancer on her body right now, but in her compassion, she's held us despite Lemuria, despite Atlantis. I, I I can't understand this kind of compassion and love. I never will be, for, because she's so advanced, she's so spiritual. That is something that I can't comprehend. You know, a planetary goddess doing for us. But she's been ordered now to to raise herself into the heavens with her with her other planetary brothers and sisters in the solar system, and if she would have released those energies immediately, the mankind would have completely perished. So what's happening also on top of the, the astrological pressure of the Aquarian age is that the Mother Earth every year is raising her vibrations slowly. She's releasing her energies every year, and one of the aspects of this right now is. The ionosphere, which was put up after the destruction of Lemuria, was intensified after the destruction of Atlantis, which didn't allow mankind to raise himself to a certain level. It stopped a lot of the cosmic rays from coming uh, onto the planet. Now the ionosphere is slowly coming down as part of the raising of the vibrations, and so first of all, the ultraviolet radiations have, have intensified. Biden science has proved that because of what's happening, but also the cosmic rays are coming through, and only those people who can keep their vibrations on level with what the Mother Earth is going to do will be physically allowed to stay on this planet. Because 
despite everything that's happening right now, what we see on the media and everything, this is only temporary. This is not going to last. There is going to be, and I want your listeners, this is one of the reasons I'm on here and other places, is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is going to be a new age that will dawn on this planet, a new age of peace and enlightenment. There will be no wars. Uh, there will be no economic inequalities. In fact, there will be no economic systems. The cosmic masters have said that the economic policies of, of this world and the country are actually a cancer in the heart of spiritual man. The materialistic maya that we're embedded in is actually holding us back spiritually. And so what Dr. King said back in the 70s when they had that, you know, the so-called oil shortage around the world, he said, there's only one energy crisis on this planet. That's a spiritual energy crisis. He says, if you solve this crisis, everything between countries and even in your personal life will automatically be solved. And fan people talk about the terrible famine, physical famine that we see around the world. One of the biggest famines that's occurring right now is a spiritual famine. Our souls are, are spiritually starved. We're actually spiritual beings in physical bodies and we're starving our psychic senses by not receiving and transmitting this power. This is what we're supposed to do as spiritual beings. And because we're not doing that, we're still slaves to our lower senses is the reason why we have this economic situation, why we have the inequality, why we have the wars, why we have disease, why we have the conditions that we are, have on this planet right now. And what Dr. King and the Cosmic Masters are saying is it's time now to raise your vibrations. It's time now to, to bring in the light. And the cosmic masters who man these spacecraft also are beaming down energies to us at this time. And we can actually f telepathically contact them and send energy through us. And that's another reason why they're in the skies right now, why they contacted Dr. King, is that they're actually enhancing uh, spiritual energies to us at this time uh, which is a very, very critical time in our history. And what we need to do as a race is is recognize the fact that we're not just a bunch of Americans or Chinese or Arabs or whatever. They address us as terrestrial man, as the human race. This is the beginning of the end for mankind as we know of mankind. Things are going to change, like you said, tremendously in the years to come. You're absolutely right. When you said those who are unable to raise their vibrations won't stay on the planet, where will they go, do you think? <laughs> is that is that information available? I'm sure I'd just like to know that part of it the was, equation. <laughs> it was revealed by the Cosmic Masters and by Dr. King that those that will not be able to uh, withstand these spiritual energies and raise their vibrations in mercy, in mercy, not as a punishment, but in mercy, after they die, they will be reincarnated on a younger planet in this solar system. Scientists have actually recognized this planet. It's called Planet X. That they, they, they call it Planet X. But this planet is a younger planet, which is on the other side of the sun from the Earth, so we can't physically see it. But based on their calculations, scientists know that there is another planet in the solar system. And that is where those who are not ready to enjoy this new age that is coming on planet earth in the near future will be and this is a more priv primitive planet and what dr king said those that are incarnated on this planet may have to start again as you know back in the cave caveman age and mm. regress themselves thousands of years until they reach a certain stage of civilization so we We've done it once with Maldek. We did it with Lumeria. We did it with Atlantis. And they're saying, this time, we're going to do it differently. We're going to take out the people who are not willing to raise their vibration. And we're going to put them on a lower planet so that they can work out their karma without blowing up the place, essentially. I think the next question that listeners are probably thinking is, uh, I don't really want to go to Planet X. So how do I raise my vibration what practices do I need to, to be doing to make sure that I'm not, you know, 
on a one-way ticket to Planet X. Well, I mentioned that the Cosmic Masters, there's a certain spacecraft that they bring in on during different times of the year by the name of Satellite Number 3. And on that spacecraft, Dr. King actually visited that spacecraft craft. He mentions in his experience and some of the things that he saw in, in his book, The Nine Freedoms. The control of this spacecraft is, is a cosmic being by the name of Mars Sector 6. It's not exactly his name, it's just a code name that he uses. But he mentioned during a transmission that on this spacecraft, in their advanced radionic computers, which he said, defy the imaginations of even the most advanced scientific brains on this planet. That's how extremely advanced they are. We, we, they're, they're beyond our, our understanding, not only spiritually, but also scientifically. Just to give you a basic analysis of terrestrial science, you know, these days with a global positioning satellite, we can pinpoint anybody on with a cell phone anywhere on this earth. And what this cosmic master said that on this particular spacecraft, they have a complete dossier of the in, in individual vibrations of not only every man, woman, and child, but every rock, fish, animal that has been on this planet, that is on this planet, and that will be on this planet. In other words, they have a complete dossier on all of us. So we can all be contactees with these cosmic masters by just thinking of them when they're in orbit. Why either they're in orbit or they're not in orbit. Some of the higher masters, say on Saturn and Jupiter, completely in tune with every life stream on this planet. They know the needs of every life stream, not only on this level, but on the high levels and lower levels. And so what they're saying is tune into us, ask that the energy come through us, sending the power, the pranic energy that comes from the sun, send it through us, through our brain, hold our hands out and send this light out. And like I said, we can do it in our normal religious practices. We can do it even if we're atheists. So long as we have this desire to serve mankind, it doesn't matter what belief system that you have. They send it doesn't matter who you are, what religious belief, all they're asking right now to help save the planet and to change the conditions is to send out the light. And one way that I'd, I've been doing it recently is that like uh, I've been going online and the 12 blessings, like I say, are a set of spiritual practices. And if anybody's open to joining me in, there's, there's people from 50 other countries that join in regularly on a daily basis. They can go to 12 blessings and, and just join us with the cosmic masters and send out the light. So that is what we're asking. If you don't want to go to planet X, these are the requirements, which we as normal spiritual human beings should have been doing thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. you know, but we've just been so involved materially and our greed and lust for power and these endless wars for profit. It's caused us to regress to the point where we, we're regarded not only in this solar system, but, but by higher advanced civilizations in this galaxy as a very barbaric, primitive, mm -hmm. a warlike race. Well, that's Which not surprising. Are. It's interesting that there's a sort of like a Santa's naughty and nice list. You know, you, obviously that's an oversimplification, but there's this dossier on everybody's vibrational status at every, any given moment. I think that can sound pretty far-fetched to the average person, but it's not that unusual if we are talking about beings from, from other planets and, and different vibrational frequencies. To me, Fen, it gives me great hope. You know why? Because I don't have to look at the political rubbish that's been thrown at us over and over again, different countries and political ideologies that everybody's fighting over. I don't have to listen to the generals causing these endless wars for profit. I don't have to listen even to religious dogma that's causing divisions in races and the murder of people based on religion. I can tell the listeners, instead of looking down on your iPhone and looking at the terrible things that we see in the media, it's time to look up to the skies. And we're talking about highly spiritual beings. The cosmic masters said that people like the master Jesus, they said he was actually from Venus. He was an interplanetary master from Venus. The star of Bethlehem was not a star, but actually an interplanetary spacecraft that, that came over the stable to herald the, the incarnation of a highly advanced interplanetary master. They said that the Lord Buddha was also 
built from Venus. When he was born, they said five disc-shaped objects were seen above the temple. And when he died, five disc-shaped objects were seen above the temple. The master Krishna, the Lord Krishna, they said it was from Saturn. They all came under mysterious circumstances. Patanjali, Lao Tse, these interplanetary masters came under interestral bodies, but they gave them a, a moral and ethical and spiritual code over the centuries, which we haven't been following. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying, go back to the, the, the basic spiritual teachings of, yeah. you know, stop killing each other, mm -hmm. start healing. The majority of people are living in ignorance. The majority of people are just satisfied with their own self-centered lives. And it's time to change that mindset and open up and become cosmic and become the gods that we used to be that's what the cosmic master is saying be that one of the transmissions that they went through was you know ye are gods so it's saying look you've re reached such a low stage of involution that your rise is going to be absolutely incredible and get back and join us in the cosmic family and, and they're asking nothing from us except that they're not asking nothing materially from us that to me, it gives me great hope. I'm curious, as we're talking about this, there's such a rise in paranormal content. Like, I, I don't know if you've been on the new Discovery Plus streaming platform, but there's a whole section that's on the home screen that's paranormal and like supernatural or something like that. I, don't, I think it's called. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it on a home screen. I've seen it hidden back in the very back. What do you think about increased paranormal investigators and these Bigfoot and alien encounter shows? Do you think these are positive or are they another distraction? I think they're positive in one aspect that they're opening up about paranormal experiences, ghosts, which again, if we know anything about other realms of existence, we've all had paranormal experiences, some of us more than others. The thing that I don't like is in regards to the aliens, you know, is the little green men and the abductions and a lot of these conspiracies, which Dr. King said they, they weren't actually cosmic masters, but maybe interference from lower astral evil intelligences mm. that, again, work behind the scenes. And so a lot of these ab so-called abductions and fear that's been generated it's probably more from lower levels than it is from the higher cosmic beings. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to another point. Dr. King did project to the lower astral realms, to these lower levels where people like mass murderers and people like Pol Pot and Hitler and Napoleon and Genghis Khan and all these mass murders through history, that's where they go uh, after they die. And there's a lot of evil in these lower astral realms. And these demonic beings have generated a lot of these wars over the years and have recruited people who died. And Dr. King, along with other adepts, uh, f physically projected to these realms and performed a lot of transmutations of these evil monsters. And that's another reason why there's a lot of strife that's going on today, not only politically, um, economically, because these lower astral beings, they're actually very advanced, highly intelligent beings. What Dr. King described was like, there's, there's advanced military down there that with advanced laser systems and computer systems, like 200 years more advanced than we have. And these magicians of the black arts, he said they have brilliant minds. They're not these hooved, you know, pitchfork kind of entities. Because of the right raising of the Mother Earth and with, with the Aquarian Age, they know that they're also due to go to the other planet. And so they're trying as much as possible to create those conditions where we will go into maybe a global war mm. and it will give them more power. So what I want your listeners to know that there is an invisible war going on between the black energies, the black arts and the forces of light. But that's another reason why we on mass need to raise our vibrations and send out the light because just like we can't see electricity, we know what electricity does. Spiritual energy, Dr. King says, is, is just an, another vibrational energy, which obviously we can't see, but it's just as real as electricity, just on a different frequency. Right. 
as a feminist queer woman in 2021 on earth, I'm curious, what was Dr. George King's outlook on women? I know a lot of these old spiritual teachers, it was very patriarchal. It was only the men who were able to do the spiritual practices. What did he think about that? Well, in the Ethereum Society, he set up a ministry and he was in contact with not only the Master Jesus, but also the Master St. Peter. And the Christian church used to teaching reincarnation and they stopped teaching that and they got into the one life thing to, to, to hold control of the masses. And Christianity these days has just become biz, big business. The Roman Catholic Church has so much money, it's just unbelievable. Dr. King created a ministry within his church and there's, there's ministers, there's priests and there's bishops and there's female ministers and there's female priests and there's female bishops. He was adamant that in any spiritual organization, women need to have equal status. Also, of course, we talk about the cosmic masters, but who are they serving right now? A female goddess, the Mother Earth, who's millions of years more advanced than any cosmic master will be, hmm. or any individual will be. Who, who are they serving? Mother Earth. We need to realize that we, we need to worship this goddess who has given us everything. Do you know about the spiritual hierarchy of Earth? You know, the Lord Babaji and different ascended masters, he actually had a contact with one of the ascended masters of the spiritual hierarchy of Earth, and it was actually a woman that he contacted. So the ascended masters of this Earth are not only men, but women as well. And in fact, when Dr. King was on satellite number three, there was a ceremony uh, where, again, in the congregation were men and women, cosmic masters. Also, in my book, I've said that women will eventually rule this planet in the future because, let's face it, the men have really not done a good job, but because <laughs> of the, they've done a terrible job. But because... Because this, this is a planetary goddess, the women who are these days are being tr terribly suppressed mm. and uh, in, they will, will rise and yeah. they will take prominent positions. They won't be in political positions, but they will be custodians of Mother Earth. They mm. will be, they'll be higher than, than any political position. Mm. So that's been predicted as well. Excellent news. So the future is female. You heard it here with Wajid. I tend to when I find a master and hear about their story or a so-called master, I want to know how they died because I think that shows their level of consciousness and vibration. How did Dr. George King die in, in 1997? You have to bear in mind that Dr. King was in a terrestrial body and he mentioned that one of the limitations uh, uh, that we have on earth is old age that some of these cosmic masters and some of these planetary systems, after they reach a certain stage of ascension, can actually change their molecular structure of their body and stay in that same body for thousands of years. And the ascended masters of the spiritual hierarchy of Earth have been in the same bodies for thousands of years. But as an advanced being in a terrestrial body, he, he died of old age. I mean, that's... But he didn't have, no. you know, like a serious heart condition or he didn't. Oh, have no, he had a lot. He had to see that again. I put that in the book that some of these like the master Jesus, he didn't take on the karma. He didn't take on the, the sins of people. He didn't forgive their sins. His actual mission was to take on the karma of the earth, which at that time was due for a tremendous catastrophe. So by dying on the cross, which was planned centuries ago. He manipulated karma and saved the planet. So people like my master and other yogi masters, they actually take on the karma of the race by taking on illnesses, which, you know, an advanced ascended master generally has zero karma in regards to their own evolution. Dr. King many times took on a lot of illnesses in order to manipulate the karma and keep that karmic balance. He said that if the spiritual hierarchy of Earth left this planet today, the whole planet would just completely be destroyed immediately because of the negative karma that we've created. Dr. King, like I say, 
voluntarily took on a lot of illnesses and conditions, which again, he never talked much about, but he suffered tremendously of behalf of mankind. He was on a mission once called Operation Starlight, where he went around the world and charged 18 different uh, mountains with spiritual energy through the Cosmic Masters, where you can go to any of these mountains now, anybody can go, and they're actually spiritual batteries. Mount Baldy in, in California is one of them. The society holds regular pilgrimages, and we go to the top of the mountain, and we raise that energy. Now, when he was at a particular, I think it was one of the English mountains that he was charging, and he was told beforehand that one of his followers was going to come to a, a very bad accident, which could possibly kill him. So he actually took the karma of that follower by falling and, and gashing his knee. So he took that follower and saved his life. So that those are the things that he did, which again, he kept pretty much under wraps. And, you know, they don't openly talk about the terrible, terrible, terrible suffering that they undergo on behalf of the human race, which their assignment is to protect and uplift. Compared to other masters that I've read about, I, I read either or. It's like they either take on a lot of karma or they actually have transcended that and they're in some kind of perpetual blissful state. That's a very good observation because there are yogi masters that actually stay away from mankind and stay in this uh, perpetual state of bliss. And Dr. King because of his advanced spiritual uh, nature, could have easily uh, got, gone into the mountains or on a spiritual retreat and stayed away from mankind. What he said, is there's two types of Buddhas in these days. There's, there's the Buddha who, who goes into the wilderness to have these high exalted states. And pretty much in, in the past, that was what people did. Uh, yogi masters would, would, would detach themselves from mankind and achieve those high spiritual states. But now, because of the Aquarian age and what's happening right now, we're in a critical situation. He said that the other Buddha is the greater one, is the one that can go into those states, but decides not to go into those states and come amongst mankind and be of service. And that's what he did. And that's what's required right now. I mean, it's good to go away for a little while and to gain some serenity and some peace. But the order of the day is to is to be in the midst of the smell and the wars and, and the disease and the starving children and all these terrible things. The, the real spiritual warrior, the, the man or woman these days has been called to be in the midst of the battle, the spiritual battle, and send out the light. And that's what, we're, what, what we've been asked to do. We've been asked to become spiritual warriors, brave spiritual warriors, and transmute uh, this evil that we bought upon ourselves. Nobody bought it on us. We bought it upon ourselves. So it's up to us now to roll up our sleeves and make that change. Basically, karma yoga. Karma yoga is, yeah. He says that's the greatest yoga of all times these days is the, is the yoga of service mm. in multitudinous forms. The guru master that I stayed with in India said the same thing about karma yoga. That's the order of the day for what's happening currently. It was a message that came through to Dr. King about how there's the silence group that uses fear and ignorance to control humanity. Silence group does exist. Dr. King said that this world is ruled by 13 faceless evil magicians who stay behind the scenes and they're, they're behind the wars. There's no such thing as a haphazardous war. Each war is completely planned years ahead. They control the financial institutions, which keep the masses in debt, and you never hear of them. Dr. King said an evil black magician can stay in power for for maybe even 50,000 years or 100,000 years, but we're all evolving back to this the divine principle. That is the reality of the situation. And nothing can stop that. They can hold it for a while, but nothing can stop that. Every dictatorship that we've seen on this planet, if you look at the history of every bad civilization has fallen. Nothing has stayed. I mean, look at the Nazis, look at Hitler. He was given power for a certain time and then he fell. He had to fall because it was all based on evils and lies. So anything that's based on evil and lies has has to fall. And in the end, truth and good eventually will overcome. So would you say that the silence group 
is the Illuminati? Are we talking about these lineages of families like the Rothschilds and the, you know, are, is that the same thing or is it just sort of the same concept? I think it's the people that even control those families behind the, these, these uh, invisible demonic entities that control these these people uh, hmm. or the silence group. And of course, you don't hear about the wealth of the silence group of these families. These people are rich beyond their means. They're not billionaires, they're trillionaires. But it's not the wealth, it's something that's even greater than wealth, and that's control and mm. having control of other people and their minds and their bodies. That is the more power, the, the evil power, that's their elixir. A lot of that power has been greatly diminished by Dr. King and a few of the interplanetary adepts that actually went downstairs and did battle with some of these demonic entities and were transmuted. So I think that's also another reason why people are being more open to the higher vibrations, to metaphysics, to the paranormal. Their minds are opening up to this newfound wisdom. Speaking of demons, you're in this world, you've been doing it for decades. Have you ever had an experience with a demonic entity yourself? I had one where I was out of my body and this bat-like uh, creature was tearing into me and I was trying to ward it off. I've had a number of situations where I've been attacked. I think a lot of people, especially in their sleep, get attacked by demonic forces. Dr. King was more prone to being attacked by demonic forces than somebody like myself or a normal individual because of his his high spiritual nature. They go after people like... Uh, Sensitives. Yeah. But there's ways of combating that as well. There's certain practices that we can do. If you feel that you're being interfered with or if you, if you feel that you're being possessed, there's uh, one practice that the master theorists actually gave to the world, which some people in the movement actually are trying to make money out of, which I don't d agree with. Everything that they give is freely given. They, mm -hmm. they haven't. Of course, you've got to buy books, material things, but the messages that they gave was completely free. But he mentioned the practice of the violet flame. Mm. The violet flame was a very ancient practice that was kept secret for thousands of years. And he openly mentioned the practice of the violet flame, where if you feel somebody's mentally or psychically attacking you, you can just think down to the Mother Earth and ask of her this protective violet flame and just bring it around your body, around your aura. It's kind of a velvety kind of caressing motherly vibration that you can put around yourself. Like if you're driving, I always try to do that, put a violet flame around myself when I'm driving. It's a wonderful form of psychic, mental and spiritual protection that you can do the practice of the violet flame. And another thing is again, to bring down the white light, it's another form of protection. The cosmic master says, if you continue to do, to send the white light through you and use the power of the violet flame, you won't be susceptible to evil influences these days. It's a form of protection. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm sensitive myself, so I'll definitely try that. And I think it's great that Dr. George King's exercises and, and his teachings are free. Yeah, of course. But there's a church to run and there's expensive and I think it's normal to give donations. Donations, and pay for yeah. Pay for glasses and stuff like that. I mean, even coming to spiritual healing, when we did healing, we never charged anybody. Yeah, it was donation-based. Donation-based. And yeah. and if you couldn't afford it, it was free. He wasn't a materialistic man at all. He said that every time he went on the platform, he took a solemn oath before his God that he would speak the truth. And he said the truth has cost him a lot of money, a lot of popularity. <laughs> and so he would get on the stage and he would tell the truth and people won't come back to his lectures because he told yeah. the truth. He didn't say that the new age is going to happen overnight. He said, no, it's hard work. You've got to pump out the energy. You've got to, you've got to send out the light. You've got to be in the midst of it. They didn't like to hear that. They wanted to hear, oh, the new age is going to come. We're going to be in a yoga retreat and here comes a new age. It's not going to come easy. It's got to be earned by mankind. Where did the doctor come from? He was a doctor of theology. So mm. that's where he got the doctor from. Gotcha. He was continually talking with, uh, you're calling cosmic masters, for the listeners, these are extraterrestrials. These are what we would think of as aliens. You've had your own encounters with extraterrestrials. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I had an extraterrestrial 
extraterrestrial contact with with a UFO at the age of 18. And at that time, I didn't mention it to anybody, maybe a handful of people, but I've kept it to myself because for me, it was a personal experience. And and even when it happened to me at 18, I didn't really want want to share it with anybody because first of all, they probably thought I would be a quack. I had had this feeling that I had to be at a certain place at a certain time and uh, it happened over a three-day period and finally I couldn't ignore it. It was like something was prompting me to be at this particular place. And so what I did is I, I got a map and I put my finger over the map of England to try to figure out where I had to be. And finally I pinpointed this place. It was about three miles away from Stonehenge, a place called uh, Clearwater. And I knew I had to be at that place. Why? I don't know. I was getting mental impressions that I had to be at that particular place. So on that Friday, I took the coach to to Salisbury and got there. And I knew I had to be there at midnight. And so I got there uh, around 1030 and I walked these country lanes in the dark, pitch black, till I reached this place called Clearwater. Talk about out of the blue. I didn't even know what where I was going, why I had to be there. It just psyched. Well, I would be I, scared I, shitless. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen, but I've always been fairly psychic. And it was definitely a telepathic psychic premonition that I got. And when I got to this place in the pitch black, I, I, I hopped over this fence near this pond and I looked up in the sky and this circular shaped white object moved from the south to the north over me. That happened exactly at midnight. And then around 1.30, another flying object came over from the west to the east over me. And to me, that symbolized the cross. That's the impression I got. And I stayed my ground. And at 3 a.m. in this freezing cold, this larger craft, physically, not the psychic apparition, but a physical craft, UFO came over and stopped and hovered where I was. And this beam of light came down on me and I was ecstatic. And I got this like this change of consciousness and I just felt so warm and it felt understanding, very spiritual. And then I don't know how long it was. It wasn't a beam of light. I actually saw white light coming from the hull of the craft. So there was this flash of white light from the hull of the craft and it came down at me. So it wasn't it wasn't a physical beam I saw. I saw the white light flash under the hull and then it came down at me. And then the craft moved on. It just gave me this realization that the people that man these craft are extremely spiritual. I just got this realization that they understood me and they understood everybody on this planet and they're extremely caring, loving individuals. You were 18 when this happened? I was 18, yeah. Oh my gosh, and you didn't shit yourself? I would have <laughs> I would have been very afraid out there. How close was the physical craft after the cross? Uh, I was I would say it was probably about uh, 100 feet above me. And you said afterward you didn't want to tell people because you thought they'd think you were a quack. Did you tell anyone, it, your best well, friend? Well, it was so it was so personal and it was so deep that I didn't want to tell anybody. It changed my state of consciousness. I told, like I said, just a few friends, but over the years, I've just kept it to myself. And I felt I, I needed to to relay that experience uh, now, this critical point in man's history and let people know that, yes, I'd, I had the experience. Also in the book, I had experience with two other friends when I was in LA, and that, that, was, that was another spectacular uh, UFO sighting uh, that, that people can read about in the book. I want to talk about that. Your book is called The Struggle for World Sanity, and it came out mid-2020. And basically what compelled you to write this book was that you realize we're in this time of transition. You thought it was important to share your stories and to inspire whoever you could, essentially. Is that right? Yeah, it's a labor of love and uh, it's a labor of service. And I think it's very important right now. So many people have been misled. The Cosmic Mass talked about gaily colored baubles that have been of tinsels that have been thrown out by the media, by the press, by different teachers. And, you know, a lot of people are confused. They don't know the true history of the planet. They don't know the, where we came from. It's important that people realize why we're here now and where we're going. 
Dr. King mentioned that the Master Theorist said in a, in a cosmic transmission, he said, we're not here on this planet to suffer. And a lot of the suffering that's occurring right now has been caused by us. We're, we're all responsible for this suffering. It's our own karma. He said, we're supposed to be enlightened. We're supposed to be happy, joyous, and free. We're not supposed to be in this mire of misery. And, and Dr. King, again, made himself unpopular in the, in the 50s and 60s. He said, there's only one reason that we're here on this planet is to raise Kundalini fully up to the Brahma Chakra and evolve from earth and, and become ascended masters. He says, that's the only reason why we're here on earth. There is no other reason. And there's a myriad of ways that we can do it. But that's our evolution, is to raise our consciousness fully and become the gods that we're supposed to be. And it doesn't make me sad. It gives me tremendous hope that there's beings that care about us, who love us, who've been watching us over the millions of years and want to see us rise. And there was a transmission that came through Dr. King that this the Cosmic Master said there was a, a race in this galaxy that was approached uh, by the Cosmic Masters who were going through a similar situation that we're going through right now on Earth. And these people listened and they opened themselves up to the spiritual vibrations of the Masters. And he said that within 50 years, the whole planet changed. Hmm. And what they're saying is if you cooperate, is more power will be given to you now than the power that you received in millions of lives that we've been on this planet. That's how critical it is right now. More energy can, can come through us than we ever could invoke in previous lives. And again, that gives me hope that, that we have people above us that really genuinely care and don't want anything back from us except for us to evolve out of ignorant children and become the spiritual adults that we're supposed to be, you know? So we can engage in that dialogue by asking for them to work through us and by sending that light out, as you mentioned before, asking that light to come in and then sending it out to the rest of the world. I'm sure right. then also other spiritual practices help with keeping this line of communication open, meditation, yoga, yes. pranayama, chanting, yes. all of yes. that kind of is going to help that channel stay open. Yeah, and, it, and it's open to everybody. They say even the lowest of the low in the lower astral realms can receive this energy if their motive at that time is, is to do some good. And, you know, people talk about, well, how come they don't land openly? Karmically, they're not allowed to land openly. Like, you know, would you receive us with a nuclear warhead or would you receive us with love? Mm. You know, yeah. uh, right now, if they landed, they would probably be received with a nuclear warhead. Oh, 100%. <laughs> they, they should not land until the females are in charge. <laughs> it's been prophesied by my master that, there will come another master, but he's going to land openly in a flying saucer, in a spacecraft, and uh, he will approach the Earth leaders. Apparently, he's going to be like seven feet tall, humanoid in a silver suit, and he will stand tall among men, and he will approach the Earth leaders. And they said his powers will be greater than the combined military might of all the armies. Wow, that's intense. This is the and this is going to happen. And we will be around because we'll be reincarnating back on earth and we'll be around those days. And he will demonstrate that power. He's, he won't come as a dictator. He's not going to kill anybody. But he will demonstrate telekinesis powers. Dr. King mentioned he might move the Statue of Liberty from New York to the California coast with his mind. Hmm. That's the kind of power that will be demonstrated in those days. And he will lead the people. And, and again, they said those who do not heed his words will be removed of the earth. And again, they won't be killed, but in compassion, after the initiation called death, they will be taken to this other planet to reincarnate on that newer, younger planet. And this has been prophesied and the new age is coming. There's gonna be a glorious new age. There won't be any wars. There won't be any military nuclear warheads. There won't be any countries that just be inhabited land and sea. Mm. And then mankind will be allowed to become and raise himself into the cosmos, because that's what we're destined for. We're not mm. destined for suffering. In fact, the cosmic masters said that. They said we weren't meant to sink this low. Even they said that. Like we've really sunk to the <laughs> lowest of the low. <laughs> we really <laughs> sunk to that. <laughs> but, but they said the rise will be so spectacular as to be absolutely incredible. 
Do we have a timeline on this guy, uh, this tall, silvery dude who's going to drop out of the, the spacecraft? Dr. King mentioned, he said that when mankind is ready, he will come. Mm. Uh, the time has been set, but we have to create some conditions which are favorable for him to land. Yeah, so we have like to, not we blow have him do- up when he lands. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, so, I guess we couldn't because he's a, he's got so much power. Well, they will try to destroy him, but they won't be successful. There will be people on Earth at that time who will hate him and will try to kill him, but they won't be able to. The Cosmic Master said, look, we, we've approached the Vatican. We've approached your governments directly, and they have not listened to us. So we're approaching the man on the street, the man and woman, the, the sincere man and woman who want to make a change. So they're approaching the masses. And the Master Theorist said that the next revolution will be a mental revolution, a spiritual mm. mental revolution. Is there anything that you'd like the listeners to know beyond what we've just discussed about your book? My book is is relatively easy to read. It's some personal experiences that I had psychically and spiritually. Uh, uh, there are experiences with my master, my own little autobiography, and some of the teachings uh, that I've researched through the Ethereum Society. It's a book of hope, and it's a book that will inspire and uplift people, and it's not something that's going to bring them down. Any last words of advice? The only advice is that no matter what you're going through right now, you can change your own karmic destiny. You are the master of your destiny. And one way that you can change it is to start sending out the light. I don't know anybody on this planet right now who's not going through an individual karmic challenge. It's, It's tough for everybody right now, especially with the pandemic as well. We have to leave a legacy of our actions so that the younger generations will be saved. That's our responsibility as well. I don't want to see my nieces and nephews suffering in the years to come because I I neglected my own spiritual responsibilities. So if you're not going to do it for yourself, then at least do it for the children of earth. Do it for them and the plants and the animals that need our assistance. So that's my message. That's a great message. It really is the call to action to be a karma yogi, essentially. We're bringing it back to that that concept. And for the listeners who don't know what that means, karma yoga is the yoga of action. The action is selfless service to to others. Thank you so much for, for taking the, this time today to talk with me. My pleasure. It was wonderful to talk to you, Fan. Wow. That is a lot to process. It was super nice chatting with Wajid. And I actually, I have a thousand more questions for him. And I'm I'm very interested in learning more about the Ethereum Society. You can find his book, The Struggle for World Sanity on Amazon, and send positive light out into the world with him by going to 12blessings.org. That's the number one number two, and then the word blessings.org. And that'll also be in the show notes. To learn more about Dr. George King and the Aetherius Society, check out aetherius.org. That's A-E-T-H-E-R-I-U-S dot O-R-G. And that'll also be in the show notes. Also... It looks like there may be a part two to this episode. Wajid has put me in touch with someone else from the Ethereum Society who may have more pieces to this peculiar puzzle. That's all I'll tell you for now. If you have a question that relates to the content of this episode, please email me at followthewu at gmail.com. Thank you for following The Woo with me today. If you love what you heard, please make sure to subscribe to Follow The Woo wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're feeling particularly stoked about this show, please leave a review and or rating. You can also support this podcast by becoming a member of The Order of Woo, where you'll get community access and loads of extra goodies exclusively on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash follow the woo. The Order of Woo patrons bolster this podcast and community and allow for the creation of more content, products, services, and events over time. Every little bit helps, and I'm so grateful for the patrons who have joined the Order already. If you've experienced something magical, mystical, or just downright weird and want to discuss it, 
or if you're interested in sharing your expertise, or if you want me to research a woo topic with you or for you, please email me at followthewoo at gmail.com. Join me next week for another woo topic. And remember, tell the truth, be nice to each other, and if it feels right,